today we are taking a swatch and unbox look at the Lucas Aquarell Studio Travel Box. And I've been trying to do more affordable watercolors for you guys um, based on some conversations we've had on Twitter. But you can check out loads more watercolor reviews and tutorials at natosoup.blogspot.com. So inside this little 12 color set is a, oh my goodness, a lemon, uh, yeah, lemon yellow, sorry which they're calling a primary, or lemon yellow primary, cadmium yellow, which is a hue, yellow ochre, English red, uh, cadmium red hue, primary red, uh, magenta, which is a primary red, cyan, a primary blue, ultramarine, viridian, or a phthalo uh, color, uh, olive green, uh, raw umber, and Payne's gray. So this is pretty, pretty standard. Um, something that's interesting in the inclusion of this that I haven't seen in a lot of um, watercolor sets that I've had a chance to test is the fact that they include yellow, CMYK, well, almost CMYK, yellow, the primary yellow, the primary magenta, the primary cyan, and they're just missing a black but blacks are pretty black colors are pretty easy to come by so and this was purchased through Jerry's Artorama on their website for around $17 and you can check the description below for a link so we have a really nicely sized little pocket set of watercolors it's perfect for slipping into a purse or a pocket And it has the Lucas Aquarell embossed on the cover. And then it's also got indentations for the pans. Is that how we, yeah, that's how we open it. Okay. Oh, it's definitely not gonna snap open. Mine isn't gonna snap open in anybody's pocket. It's pretty hard to open actually. And this little ridge really wants to dig into your finger. There we go. Very nice, very straightforward, not even a brush included. But you know, honestly, with a lot of these little pocket sets, the brushes that they include are pretty terrible. So it gives you the option to include your own travel set, uh, own travel brush. And rather than accounting for the cost of the brush, maybe you're actually getting better watercolors. So I'm gonna use a little spritzer bottle and spray some water on these to get them activated. Give it a few seconds and then we'll swatch. And if there's something you miss or you want a different view of things, you can check out the review of this at natasoup.blogspot.com. All right. So getting a lot there. And I think with these, I'm going to go ahead and do just a straight swatch. And then we may do an opacity test swatch. Because these seem to... I don't wanna say have a high pigment load because that could be binder, but they seem very readily activated and very thick. Which could be the inclusion of optical brighteners or just could be the pigments they're using. So far, while wet, the colors are very bright and vivid. And I sort of like that they've included a CMYK. Um, there's sort of a misconception, ooh. Um, there's sort of a misconception that, um, sorry, look, thinking things about these paints and also, ooh, that's like an indigo. It's a really nice color. All right, so um, it's nice that they've included CMYK. You don't see a lot of watercolor sets do that. There's sort of a misconception that you can mix paints in CMYK to get any color. That's really more for um, inks, like printer inks. But I myself have never actually tried it like that. I've done it with printing, so I may have to do a challenge where I attempt that at some point in time. Okay, so I've drawn a series of black lines. That's going to be used to test opacity. And while we're here, we're just gonna go ahead and do that as well. And as you can see, opaque colors, and these are watercolors, so they should be fairly transparent. Opaque colors will obscure the lines and they're more likely to do it when they're wet. So we do need to allow it time to dry. And I'm sorry that I am just slinging paint everywhere, it seems. But that's okay. We'll we'll roll with it. 
And for my patrons who are watching this video, would you guys find it more helpful if I included scans of these swatch tests? Or is the video slash the blog post okay? With the scans, I'm gonna have to color correct them. And uh, when we do video, our videos are color corrected. All right, let that dry. So the colors you see should be fairly accurate. All right, so I need to allow these to dry and then I can check in with you guys. All right, so our Lucas paints have had a chance to dry. As you guys can see, they're actually fairly opaque for transparent watercolors. And do they say? They don't say transparent necessarily. They do say fine artist watercolor. Now usually if watercolors are meant to be opaque, it will say so. Um, and they're about as opaque as some of the Grumbacher or Pelican opaque watercolors I've tested. With the worst offenders being English red, um, definitely olive green and seep, no, I'm sorry, raw umber and Payne's gray are all fairly opaque. Uh, ultramarine is also pretty opaque. Um, and I have a feeling that's gonna make these difficult to paint with, but we're gonna see when I do the field test. So thank you guys so much for watching this swatch and unbox video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I hope you guys will keep an eye out for my field test video. And before I totally sign out, I did want to point out that this little palette has some built-in wells in the lid and the little, um, the half pans are very easy to remove. There's really nothing holding them in of their friction fit. So you might want to use like some double stick tape or some folded over washi tape to keep them from moving too much, although the lid is pretty secure. So they shouldn't be going anywhere, but if you wanna be double sure, some double stick tape or some washi tape. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please share it with a friend and I hope to see you guys again really soon. Bye guys.